Hey guys, it's me, Chef Mick, cooking for the boys live. We are back. All right, today is pepper stuff in. That's right, we're going to talk about peppers. We're going to learn some stuff about peppers, but we're also going to be stuffing the peppers. So, it's a good long show. Let's get started and then we'll talk about peppers as we're going along. Let's go to the work area. All right, right here, guys, in the work area, you will see the different peppers we're working with. This is a basic bell pepper. This is, it looks like a poblano. This is really a pasilla. And of course, a jalapeno pepper. Now, before I start cooking and putting the stuffings together, I want to show you how we cut these open and uh, prep them for, for what we're about to do. If you're not used to working with pepper, guys, put on a glove you will be shocked at how long the capsaicin and and the uh, chemicals from pepper stay on your fingers and when you rub your eyes when you uh, wipe your nose when you you know do any of that stuff you're gonna start crying if you're not used to working with them put on gloves I'm only putting on one glove the other hand is gonna handle the knife that's right but if you want be careful put on both gloves let's go the bell pepper which is the first one we'll work with is actually the easiest one we're gonna clean and the bell pepper also is the lowest rated pepper as far as heat goes so cut off the top and you cut out the membrane in the middle and you have yourself a beautiful little bell pepper bowl right there more importantly you have the top that's gonna go right back on top of it all right <clears throat> so now let's move while we have our gloves on let's use the other ones this is our jalapeno okay this one we're using today it does not matter if you keep the stem on or not so I'm gonna cut the stem off and then I happen to cut it right down the middle this time okay right down the middle split it in half and let's get the main membrane and the seeds out of here right now dun, dun, dun. like this gone one more on this side now we are going to keep the jalapeno halves together we just don't have to have it together while we're separating the stuff there you go now we can also we'll put this back over here and this gone and then the pasilla which is like a poblano it is hotter but not by much okay this one because of how we're using it today because this one will actually be breaded or battered and fried we're gonna cut it a different way first cut about halfway down from up there do not cut it all off then come on one side over here and cut almost all the way to the bottom then find where the other half ended over here and do the same thing all we want to do is make a little place for us to put the stuffing in and there you go this membrane actually is only this up here it's only this part right here so all we have to do is pull it out like that now yes all the seeds are in there so you can just dump it out it's ready to go all right see how easy that was guys and we did it all why are we using gloves <laughs> so that we're not crying later on I promise you if you don't have the gloves on and you're not used to this you will be crying in a little while when you accidentally rub your eyes all right now let's get cooking why don't we show the uh, stove top okay two things you need to know about the stove top guys first of all I'm putting here I have this pan which has just a coating a light coating of oil we're about to cook on this right now the second thing is our oven is set at 425 it is preheated already at 425 the first thing like I said we're gonna work with will be bell peppers our bell pepper today our bell pepper today will be stuffed with carrots uh, what is this oh asparagus <laughs> what is this again I keep forgetting asparagus and uh, green onion believe it or not but that's not it we're gonna also put some pork into it so while this is heating up and the oil is heating up I'm gonna drop this part of it here so it can saute a little bit this is going to saute what else should we do with it guys come on you know the answer we should throw some salt on there 
That's right. Let's always salt it up. Now let's go back to the work area. Over here is where we're going to actually get the meat that goes in it. <coughs> when I said we're going to work on peppers, some are going to be entrees and some are going to be sides and some are going to be appetizers. This is your entree, guys. So this right here is a thin boneless pork chop. That's all it is. Thin boneless pork chop. Okay, I've got two of them here. I'm going to cut through them right here like this. And I'm just going to dice them up. <coughs> this stuff is going to actually be in the oven for about 25 minutes. So you don't need to cook the veggies all the way soft. And you don't need to, you just need to brown the meat. That's all you have to do is brown the meat. I think, I think, in this case I forgot a spoon. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. My producer, director, Duran, sitting over here is looking at me saying, I thought you had everything you needed. Well, I did it. I lied. Okay. So, let's go to the oven. I mean, let's go to the stovetop. Mr. Producer, director, camera guy. <coughs> let's drop that in there. We drop the meat in. Remember, wash your cutting board. Wash your hands. We're dealing with pork. We're dealing with raw meat. We should always keep our hands clean <coughs> and free of that cross contamination. Now, all we're doing here, and you can see me pushing it around a little too hard. All we're doing here, guys, is browning the meat along with these veggies that are cooking up really nice. Okay? This does not take long at all. This does not take long at all. So let's leave this here. Let me throw some pepper on there. You know, a little bit of pepper would probably taste really good right now. All right, remember my pepper mill. Da, 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 da. Anyway, I thought I'd got away from that. Uh, this is why I've been gone so long. And now I'm back to it. <coughs> All right, a little bit of salt and pepper on there. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. It sounds angry. I don't like it when it sounds angry at me. You can see the meat browning. Let's just flip the meat over, get it nice and brown. <coughs> I'll tell you what, why don't we go back, why don't we go back to the workstation while this finishes up browning real quick. Alright, at the workstation, we have an oven safe pan, obviously. This is actually a long cookie sheet and it has foil on it. Okay, these are the peppers I've already got ready to go, they're just not stuffed yet. Okay, <laughs> and yes, I was able to get one of every color, orange, yellow, red, and green, so it's going to look really pretty, and if you're able to do that, that's a wonderful thing, and of course, when you serve it, it's going to look really good. All right, so, now all we have to do is take, we're going to turn the our stove off, now all we have to do is take our cook, remember, we're gonna, we just need to brown the meat. It's going to be finished cooking inside the oven, okay? Now, I want to at least share the, the enough meat on it, on all of them. So, here we go. If your bell pepper, if your bell pepper decides it doesn't want to stand on its own, there's nothing wrong, if, if there's nothing wrong with cutting off just the sliver on the bottom to flatten out the bottom. There's nothing wrong with that. There we go. Oh, this is going to be great. And believe me, this was taste tested earlier well by me basically I think uh, Duran got some but he didn't I didn't let him come back for the seconds that he should have come back for and let's fill this up you see how this works guys very simple we're gonna fill it up yes I know I dropped some on the sides but that's really not that big of a deal okay but if you want to pick it up and put it in there it's kind of hot be careful fill it up Top it off. If you want to mix and match the toppings, that's up to you. <laughs> Look, the topping may not stay. Take a toothpick and just push it in between so that it holds it in place right there. Very simple. <coughs> Very simple. A toothpick for this one. To, and from the top to the bottom. Just remember your toothpicks are there. Of course, you won't just bite into this like an apple or something, so you'll remember. And one more here. And one more here. Beautifully, 
beautifully stuffed and ready to go. The oven is at 425. Look at that. Now they're ready to go. Oh, they are not ready to go. Guys, before you put it in the oven, make sure to spray it down a little bit. This is just an olive oil cooking spray, but uh, just a regular cooking spray would work fine too. Spray it now. You know, give the heat something to work on here, not just to help soften up the, the pepper, not just uh, working directly on the pepper. There you go. Now it's ready to go. Let's put it in the oven. <clears throat> We're going to throw it in here for 25 minutes, my friends. Let's keep it up. Now let's set the cook timer. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Start. Okay. That's in the oven for 25 minutes. So in the next 25 minutes, I've got other things to show you. Next thing we're going to work on, and I'm going to put on another glove, is the jalapenos. What are we going to do with the jalapenos, guys? I'm pretty sure you already know this, because we do it. We did it on our grilling season, and I might have even done it on the show before that. Sometimes putting gloves on is very difficult, especially these less expensive types. Just blow into it like a little like a little ant balloon animal type thing and your hand will go in a lot better. So, what are we gonna do? We're gonna stuff it with cream cheese and then we're gonna wrap it in bacon and then if we need to, we'll use a toothpick to hold it in place and we're gonna throw it in the oven. So, this is why we try our best to keep these sides together, all right? So, we grab our cheese, our cream cheese, and yes, we're going to use the glove hand for this part of it. First of all, because you're touching the jalapeno, but also because I don't want to get cream cheese all over my hand and I have to wash it off that way. Yuck. All right, I believe these two go together. Now, the other hand will get the bacon. Remember to wash your hands after doing this because the bacon is raw and we need to keep our hands clean from cross-contamination very good man you guys are really good at this <clears throat> I'm gonna bring this is the sorry about that this is where I'm gonna put them so here it is squished together held together by cream cheese and now and you know what I'm gonna wrap it on top so the cream cheese doesn't come out the top and then push it around the sides like this and like I said just get yourself a toothpick and push it through and there you go hey it didn't want to wrap so let's push it through on the other side all right yeah we'll be fine with it no worries not everything is perfect guys all right now that I got bacon and stuff all over this I'm gonna ruin my cream cheese oh well I'm gonna take this off so I don't ruin my cream cheese how's that I'm not happy about it but I don't want to put bacon inside the cream cheese because then I have to get rid of anything I don't use because you don't want to have you don't want to come back to your cream cheese and have uh, you know try to save it in the refrigerator and have it have been messed with bacon this whole time <clears throat> so here we go again one more piece of bacon and yes we're gonna have to do it again now here we go let's push this through and now that's there wash our hands in between Get some more cream cheese for the next one. Oh, good. We're going to use up all the cream cheese. I don't have to worry about the bacon part of it then. Because there's not going to be any left over. One more. All right. Remember, I did this on the grill. And we've done it inside. It's going to go in the oven for the remainder of the time. Whatever time I can get it in there. It looks like it'll be about 20 minutes. If you want your bacon crispier, leave it in there longer. Okay. But the bacon will be done and cooked in those 20 minutes so wrap it and go and one more and we're going to use all this cream cheese so we don't have any left over and so here we are now chilies are measured their their heat their spiciness their heat are measured on a scoville unit the scoville unit was named after the gentleman who developed it called Wilbur Scoville in 1912 so this guy he was working for I forgot the name of the company but he used human obviously to taste it 
taste test it. But he needed a way <coughs> for them to taste it without burning their mouths so badly. Okay, this is ready to go. It's going to go in the oven for the remainder of the time. In this case, 20 minutes. <coughs> and it's still at that 425. It's still set at 425. So, he needed human taste testers, but he didn't want all of them just burning their mouths every time they tasted a chili. So, he developed a way of adding sweetened water, you know, sugar water, the syrup basically, to ground up, to ground up chili. And he, every time he diluted it a little bit more, then the people would taste it, and then when they could no longer taste the heat, then he would measure that amount of syrup and, and give it a rating. Uh, the Scoville Heat Units is the rating that, that uh, of course, it came out with. And while it sounds extremely hot, it really is not. Okay, now we've got to go back. We've got to throw one more in the oven. The one we're going to throw in the oven next is going to be the pasilla. I'm sorry, no. <coughs> That's my bad right there. It's not the pasilla. The pasilla is the one we're going to fry. The one I'm going to throw next is going to be Anaheim green chilies. Anyway, so the sco Scoville, I'm going to turn on this thing again because... <coughs> No, I don't need this on yet. You're right. Scoville would do this with all the different chilies. <coughs> and this is how he determined their heat. It, it was so popular that it's still that way, even though they've changed the way they've, <coughs> they, uh, they test the heat. They now use a high-performance liquid chromatography type measurement thing. It's a big, long words. But they still call them Scoville heat units. So let's compare. The bell pepper is a zero on the Scoville heat units. It has zero heat. Jalapenos, however, <coughs> can go up to 8,000 heat units. And it really, that's sort of like in the middle, but it's still very hot. These are Anaheim green chilies. Anaheim chilies actually can only go, will go up to about 2,000, and which makes them very flavorful, but not very hot. And uh, then we'll talk about the pasi in a minute. Okay. If you get an Anaheim green chili, it's going to look like this, except brighter green. If you throw that in the oven the way it is, <coughs> like this, the skin is going to burn. It's going to blister. And when, you're, when your friends, when your family are trying to eat it, they're going to be peeling skin out of their mouth. <coughs> First of all, it doesn't look good. Second of all, it's very bothersome. So you turn on your oven. 425 is fine. You spray these down and you put them in the oven on a uh, cookie sheet. You put them in for like 20 minutes. At 10 minutes, you flip them over. You're going to already see the skin blistered and brown. You pull them out, let them, let them uh, cool off where you can touch them, and then you just peel the skin off of them. This is what it's going to look like. Now, a lot of people get from here and then they just chop it up and throw it into their food. That's wonderful. It's great. I love green chili. If you, if there's one thing about me that I do, is I use green chili in anything. This time, I want to fill this. I don't want to cut it up and use it. I want to put stuff inside of it and use it. So, I've cleaned off the skin. We're going to make this one a vegan. In here, I threw the tofu. I happen to have a... Um, uh, tofu, I, I forgot what they called it. It's like very hard. It doesn't, it doesn't liquefy at all, okay? And, and I used it for the, uh, for the grilling show. Then I took, believe it or not, I took sweet potato. And I used my, my, what is it called, Duran? Grater. Yes, I used my grater. See, Duran's helping me out here. And I grated the sweet potato. I did not cook it. I just grated it into the tofu and I added raisins. In this case, uh, white raisins. So, here you see tofu with uncooked sweet potato and white raisins. Now, I chopped them up even more and more and more so that they'll stay together better. But, uh, so, <clears throat> there's nothing meat. There's no, there's no dairy. There's nothing in it. This is going to keep this vegan for us. Alright? So, we're going to grab a bunch of this. And we're just going to stuff it inside these chilies. Like this. 
Now, why, why, why would I do this? Well, because not everybody wants to eat meat as a stuffing. And not every stuffing is going to have cheese in it. You should be able to make different ones for different things. Of course, if you wanted to put this into the jalapeno, that would work fine too. If you wanted to put it into the <coughs> smaller bell peppers, nothing wrong with that either. <coughs> but you see this? Look at that. This is going to be beautiful. It's going to be tasty. And, and for your vegan and vegetarian friends, it's the best way to go, guys. <coughs> it's the best way to go. I had extra firm turf tofu. Tofu. That's what I was trying to say. Extra firm. Now there is tofu that is just plain tofu that's not firm and it'll ground up a lot easier. But this is what I used. This is going to go into the oven just like this. We have 15 minutes remaining. This will stay in there because the chili is already cooked and all we're going to do is heat through the tofu and cook, <coughs> basically cook the uh, sweet potato. 15 minutes. That 425 oven. Here we go. Wow. Everything looks great. Everything smells great. We are moving right along now. Let me turn this thing on again. And let me put, let's go to the work area, I mean to the uh, <coughs> stove again. Now, at the stove, you'll see I still have this plate, this, uh, this pan. I'm, now I'm going to change it out because I just need a little bit, tiny bit, you can see that, a coating of oil. I turned it back on to high. And now we're going to work on the filling for the next chili. So this filling happens to contain, did I do the right one? Yeah. This one happens to contain sweet potato and onion. But that's not all it's going to have, okay? It's also going to have ground meat, ground beef. So here's where stuff starts getting tricky for us. Okay, now we're going to cook that up right there. What should we put on it, guys? Salt. Salt, 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 salt. There you go. And pepper. Salt and pepper is here. Salt and... Okay, I won't do that either. All right, so we got salt and pepper. We got to cook this up just a little bit. Let's get this onion translucent. That means like see-through. All right, let's work on that. Now let's go to our work area again. Now I told you guys... <clears throat> this one is going to be battered. Okay, you remember we cleaned them out. We have this oh, this place right here to put the stuffing in. But <clears throat> this one is going to be battered <clears throat> and then fried. Okay, so let's work on the batter. In this case, while you can use any kind of batter you choose to use, in this case we're going to use a beer batter. I think the beer batter, the beer with the chili is going to go really good and you're going to be really happy with it. The flour is not seasoned, so I'm throwing some salt into the flour. I'm also going to throw some pepper into the flour. And while you guys are watching the salt and pepper sit inside the flour, I've got to get uh, I've got to get out one egg because I forgot to get an egg out, which my producer, director, camera guy Duran is staring at me again. Can't believe that I did not have an egg ready. Well, I get it. I get it. That's right. I am. I am rebelling. All right. So what we have here is one cup of flour, some salt, some pepper, and an egg. All right. So far, so good, right, guys? Very easy, very simple. Now, here comes the hard part, my friends. Here comes the hard part. The beer. In this case, we're using the Corona. It's a light beer. Remember, guys, just like wine, don't use a beer that you wouldn't want to drink otherwise. Don't go buy yourself a, you know, a generic type of beer that you would normally not normally drink, because it's going to be flavored into your food. Okay? <clears throat> this happens. Corona happens to be like seven ounces. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm coughing because there's plenty of smoke coming off of my onions over here. All right, so look at that. One cup of flour, seven ounces of Corona, salt and pepper, and our batter is almost ready, guys. Our batter is almost ready. So while our batter gets ready, let's go to our work, I mean our stove, our stove top. Here you see the onions and the, what am I cooking with them? Sweet potato. The onion and the sweet potato. And just like last time, just like last time, guys, 
this, this, it's going to get cooked again when it goes into the fryer. So let's just brown this meat. This happens to be ground beef. Now, when you're trying to think of what should I cook, what should I stuff, you know, different chilies with, you know, what should I do it for my chili relleno or whatever you want to call it, you should always think one thing, guys. Would I eat the stuffing by itself if it was just a standalone dish? Okay? Would you eat the stuffing by itself? And if the answer is yes, then don't be afraid to put it inside one of the chilies. Because all you're doing is enhancing the flavor. Alright, so you see how we're browning this meat right here? Now, over here you'll see my wok. Okay? The wok has oil in it right now. It has a good amount of oil. Why am I using a wok? Well, I'll tell you why. First of all, woks are thin metal, and they will heat up really fast. And I'm going to heat it up, but I'm not going to do the work here. I'm just trying to heat the oil up. So they're thin metal, they heat up fast, which means the oil inside will heat up faster. Secondly, because of the way they're designed, okay, they're designed like a little funnel, so the bottom is actually smaller than the top. So when you put the oil in, it rises faster and you're using less oil. Okay? It fills up faster, you use less oil, and uh, it heats up faster. So those are all very good reasons to use a wok when you're doing some kind of uh, deep frying. Look, you can see that. Look at this. The onion is turning great. Look at that. The sweet potato is looking really good. Just like we did on the other one, guys. We're going to do this, but we still have to stuff those peppers with it. Okay? And then after we stuff the peppers, what do we have to do? We have to bread it and fry it. So, here we go. We've got eight minutes left on the ones in the oven. In fact, I'll check the ones on the oven right now. Remember, the first things we put in were the bell peppers. Those bell peppers have been in the longest. And uh, we, put, we, did, we did put a uh, toothpick on them. So they're still standing up. They look really good. Oh, everything looks wonderful. You guys are going to really love it. You guys are really going to love this. Okay. So, look at this. This is how quick, this is how quick the stuffing was cooked. Okay? So, let's get the stuffing out of the way. You can still see that uh, my stove is hot right there. I'm going to go ahead and turn this one off. I know it's on. I'm going to turn it off. Now I'm going to put it back here so it's closer to the camera. See, sometimes I worry about the camera so you guys can see what's going on. I'll put this over here and let it cool off right here. Let's go to the work area. Alright, look at this. This, guys, right here is our batter. Okay? That is actually a very good batter. There's still a little bit of beer left. If you wanted, if you wanted to water it down a little bit more, you would. If not, just drink the rest of the beer and if you're a drinker. If you're not, don't worry about it. This, the alcohol will burn off for the most part. That's a beautiful batter right there. Look at that. You can make your onion rings with that. You can make chicken. You can do whatever you want. You know, nice chicken nuggets with that. That's beautiful batter. Now, before we batter up stuff, <laughs> batter up, let's get, uh, let's get these. Let's get our pasillas. Let's get them stuffed, okay? I'm, I'm going to bring it this way. Don't you go anywhere. I'm going to bring it this way. Okay? I want to put this here so I can put this directly on it. There you go. All right. Now, here's the, here's the tricky part. First of all, this is very hot, okay? And there's really not that kind of room that you have in the bell pepper, but there is still plenty of room to put stuff in, okay? Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. You see? There's still plenty of room to fill it. Now, we're, gonna, we're about to put this in oil. We're about to batter it and put it in oil. We don't want the stuff coming out of there. So let's go ahead and put a toothpick right through here. If you need more than one, that's fine. But you see how the toothpick works? It's going to hold it in place. Okay. Let's get another one done. Look at this. You can see this one's a lot better. You can see how much room there actually is. Okay. And look at this. If you want to pull out the rest of that, just please go ahead and do it. Remember what I said. <coughs> Make a stuffing that you're not going to have a trouble or you're not going to mind eating if it was standalone. There's going to be plenty of stuffing left over, and it'll be a great lunch tomorrow. Well, without the chili, just a great lunch. And I'm sure my wife will be really pleased to take it with her. So, here we go. Let's put another 
Let's go a little lower so it can hold it better. Another toothpick right there. Look at that. Look at that. You see how that works? Wonderful. Now the toothpick, don't worry about it being fried. Don't worry about that stuff. It's going to work out fine. Okay? Let's fill out one more. And this oil, oh, the oil is nice and hot already. So we really got to get going here. We really got to get going. Let's fill this up really nice. Here we go. Oh, this is beautiful. Yes. You can use other things. You can actually fill it with meat and cream cheese and other things all at once. You can throw in, uh, like I did on the other ones, any of the stuffings I did on the other ones, you can do on this one. It does not matter. Okay? What matters on this one, and look at this. You can see how hot this is getting because my oil is smoking like crazy. So I need to turn this down a little bit so as to not cause a huge, gigantic oil fire as I'm still trying to finish this up. Okay? So, we're still here. So, you can fill them with any of them and you can deep fry them and you can batter them and deep fry them all you want. All of these stuffings are interchangeable. The jalapeno is, of course, the hardest one to worry about because, well, it's just so small that cream cheese or something like it, tofu, or whatever is easiest thing to stuff in there. All right. Look at this. We got four of these things ready to go. Okay, this last one, I'm going to put two toothpicks in because when I cut it, I cut it a little bit too much. Okay, we have four of these ready to go. So what do we do next, guys? Well, obviously, we got to put them in the oil. So, here we go. Let's go to the stove top. Oh, okay, you want to see it batter before I go to the stove top? Sure. My producer decided that he would rather see me batter it here as if I didn't know what I was doing. No, because he wants to make sure you guys understand how easy this is. <laughs> okay, you see, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to get battered. And now, if we'll go to the stove top, this is one, I'm gonna do all of them. Okay, you can see that this oil is way too hot for me right now. I need to let it cool down. I need to let it cool down. I'm also gonna turn it down to a medium over here. If I drop this in, it's going to make a big noise and a lot of smoke. Is that what you guys want to see? Yes? Okay, here we go. Ready? Is that what we want to see, producer? Sure. Yeah, producer says yes. Okay, here we go. Oh, beautiful. You see that? I'm going to do. I'm going to add another one to it right now. I'm going to add another one to it right now. Okay? Let's batter up another one. Batter up. That's right. Just like baseball. Batter up. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. Okay, now, what do I need to do? I'm going to put another one in. And it's, let me wash my hands real quick. Because I have a battered hand. <laughs> now, here's my tongs. And it's time to turn this one over. And look at that right there. You see that? Remember, everything inside of it is cooked. All we're doing is heating it through. And look at this batter. You can see that this is the perfect, perfect batter to use for it. Look at that. Oh my goodness. And we have cooled it down enough that that if I add another one, it's not going to go too bad. So, why don't we add another one? We have four of them to make, and we have two minutes left on the other things. So we're doing really well today, guys. Wow. All right. <coughs> don't forget, go to, uh, go to our Facebook page. That's uh, facebook.com. Then you do one of those slash things. I don't know if back or forward. I don't really know the difference. And then cooking. And then the number four. F -O, um, the number four. And then the boys. Cooking for the boys. And like us there, guys. All right. Like us there. Go to our website, ricklucio.com. And enjoy us. Enjoy us there. And also our YouTube uh, channel where you'll catch all of these shows on, on the replay at your convenience. Our YouTube channel is uh, Chef Mick. That's me, Chef Mick. And I've got one more that I'm trying to batter for you. Okay? One more that I'm going to batter and put it in that oil. The oil may have been a little too hot on those first ones, but it's really nice now that it's going to take its sweet time to cook. And taking the sweet time means everything softens up really nice. All right. There's four of them, guys. There's four of them. 
And we still have a couple of minutes left on, uh, we have 44 seconds left. On the oven, on the uh, stove, on the oven, I don't remember which one. Is it the stove or the oven? On the oven, that's why I have a producer. So he can tell me which one it is. And, oh, things are looking great here, guys. Things are looking great. In fact, we're going to stay on this camera because I'm about to open the oven. It's going to go off right now. I'm going to open it, and you're going to be looking at the bell peppers. Now, it looks like one of the bell peppers is struggling to stay up, but we're going to get to it. Don't worry about it. And here we go. Come on. Oh, you hear that? You hear that? That tells me it's got 20, the 25 minutes are done. All right, we need a hot pad, something to hold it with, and ah, okay. Don't stick your face in the oven. Let the steam come out first, <laughs> and then you'll be ready for it. Look at this. I hope you can see this beyond what I'm cooking. These bell peppers are incredible. They are incredible. Look at that. Look at the yellow. Look at the uh, orange one. Look at the yellow. That's the red. That's the green. Oh, these things here, getting cooked up nice and slow, but all the way through. In fact, I may come back. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to finish cooking these right here. Look at that. All right, guys. Now, I know what you're thinking. You really can't see it all at once, but I'm going to let you guys see it all at once right now. While you're watching this finish, let me set up for the finale here. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh, beautiful. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh my. Oh my. Oh. This is gorgeous, guys. I'm going to let this one cook a little bit more on that side. And I'm going to bring you one of these beautiful ones over here. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, well, how about the other ones that are in the oven? Um, let me tell you about the other ones that are in the oven. They're coming out of the oven right now. I just need to make a little room for them. Let's get the uh, jalapenos out. They've been in the longest. Uh, well, the second longest, of course. Jalapenos. We're going to put them on a plate. And then we'll get the green chili out. Let me show you what the... Oh, my goodness. First of all, <clears throat> bacon smells good. Even if you don't eat bacon, you have to admit it smells good. Okay? And I understand if you don't want to eat bacon. That's cool. Oh my gosh. So look at these poppers. Oh. Oh. I am in love with myself, apparently. Because I just love my cooking. Now. Ouch. Okay, a little bit of a burn, but that's cool. I'm all right. Thank you for your concern. This is what happens when you're dealing with very, very, very hot stuff. Okay? Oh, let's look at that. Look at that, guys. Tell me that didn't cook really nice. That's beautiful. Okay? One last thing. What else do we need to get out, guys? That's right. The green chili. The stuffed green chili. This is already skinned and ready to go. I don't believe I can use the uh, tongs for this. I think I need to get myself a spatula. All right. So, this is already turned off. The oven is already turned off. Now, I'm trying to get this without, you know, without causing so much of a, of a riot that you won't be able to enjoy it. All right, let's go to the work area, guys. What do you see in front of you? I'm going to tell you what you see. You see four different kinds of chili peppers, all stuffed with something different. This is our Anaheim pepper. This is the vegan one. And yes, I know it's sitting here, so don't worry about it. The other two aren't touching anything. They're still vegan. <laughs> this is our jalapenos, which are cream cheese and bacon wrap. These are our bell peppers. Our bell peppers are filled with the uh, pork, carrots, and asparagus. Look at that. Doesn't that look wonderful? It's like a, like a bread bowl for your soup. 
this is a bowl for your meal right here look at this you can eat all that then you can eat this it's great this is why this is the entree this is an appetizer this is a side and this is actually an entree also this is in this case the pasillo the pasilla chili stuffed with these with the uh, sweet potatoes and onion all right let's go to camera one guys my name is chef mick this is cooking for the boys live these are four different chilies stuffed four different ways you're gonna enjoy every one of them all right don't forget us at ricklicio.com at our facebook uh twitter you can follow us on twitter this this is my book guys this is my children's book i finally have have it in stock here um ordering some more but see that's me on the back <laughs> all right cooking <laughs> these are kings for a day about uh, the same boys who i started cooking for the boys for chef mick if you know how to cook you can marry for looks Thank you all for joining us. Duran helping out over there. Check out the credits. See all the work he does. Peace and love, guys. Peace and love. See ya.